Without a doubt, when we make the decision to downsize our homes, we can really increase the quality, not only of the home, but also of the lives of the people that live within it. And that's exactly the case with this next tiny house that we're about to visit, where one young woman has built a beautiful home for both herself and her two boys. Hi Leah, how are you? Hey Bryce, nice to meet you. It's great to meet you and I'm very excited to see your tiny house. Yes. Now this tiny home was actually inspired by the Zen tiny house, wasn't it? Yes, and built by the same builder. So can you tell me a little bit about how that journey happened and how you came to be living in a tiny house? Mm, well, I actually feel that tiny house living found me. So I was in this phase of my life where I was doing this really big declutter of my external world and my internal world just kept having this vision of a cabin in the woods or a cabin surrounded by nature. And I didn't know how to make that happen. I didn't have the resources at the time. Then one day I was watching YouTube and I came across the Zen Tiny House. It kind of recommended that I watch it. <laughs> and so I did and I thought, this is like the cabin. And then a few days later I was having coffee with a friend and he said, I'll contact Sam. He builds tiny houses in Byron Bay. It turns out that he built the Zen Tiny House. So it was a bit of like divine intervention. So after a separation, I was in this situation where I didn't have many options and the financial pressure was real. So I really had to come up with a creative solution to really you know, move forward with my life. And I knew what I didn't want, but I wasn't as clear about what I did want. And so I could have got super busy trying to figure that out, but actually I went into a lot of stillness. And in that space, this tiny house living emerged from that space. So what was it that really attracted you to the idea of living in a tiny house? I liked the idea of living simply and just having what I need. And another reason for going tiny is to reduce my living costs. So I would say my living costs overall, I think I'm saving about 50% of what I was compared to when I was renting. Also being more connected to nature, so being able to take my home into a spot in nature that was a really big inspiration to go tiny. And to that end, you've found a really interesting parking spot here. Can you tell me a little bit about the land? Yeah, it's a friend of a friend's property. So I actually had a bit of trouble finding a spot because my tiny house is quite tall and it's actually oversized. But I was fortunate that this piece of land here is flat. And yeah, I'm really grateful that someone said yes to having me in this beautiful spot. So what size is the tiny house? So it's three meters wide and it's seven and a half meters long, and it's 4.6 meters high. And what are you doing for power and services in this house? So I'm connected to the mains house, a power and water. They do have solar power. And so I just hook in and um, away I go. Nice and simple. And can you tell me a little bit about the style of the tiny house and why you chose this design? Well, it really is based on the Zen house. It's Japanese and Scandinavian inspired. But I really, I was inspired by Nadia and Kester's take on how they did their tiny home. And then I've just added a few modifications. And you actually live here with your two boys, don't you? Yes, I do. So I've got um, a seven and a nine year old and they come to me on the weekends and the school holidays. They have a really big home in Brisbane. Then they come here and have that nice contrast. And it's kind of, they want to be in the same room with me anyway. And so this is like one big room. Very cool. Well, I really love the exterior of the house. I think the Zen is definitely a design which has inspired lots of people. And I am very excited to see the inside and see what changes you've made. Can we check it out? Yeah, absolutely. Come Thank you. In. Oh, this is just lovely in here. Especially walking into this space, it just makes the home feel so welcoming, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You've got this wonderful big lounge area, really comfortable looking sofa, and already I can see a tremendous amount of storage has been built into this space. Yes, I'm not short of storage, so there is storage all through that space there, all through the stairs, and yeah, I'm not short of storage in this home. And then you've got this lovely big feature window here as well. Yes, so I really love having a lot of windows. It really creates more a feeling of more spaciousness in the home. And um, I've got two big gas lift windows with rolling fly screens. So every window has a fly screen because in a tropical climate, we want to keep the bugs out. I also have a, a bookshelf up 
in that space because it was just kind of sitting there and I thought, oh yeah, well let's just put another storage solution into that kind of negative space. Absolutely, that's a very, very clever use of the space there. And then one big addition which you have made to this design is of course the second sleeping loft. Can you tell me about this? Yeah, so this is the boys' sleeping loft and they love it up there. It's like a little man cave and this ladder actually detaches and hooks up through here. So when they're not here, I've got like more spaciousness to dance and live. Absolutely, very clever. And it really is wonderful how you've created this very separate space for the boys because they've got a bit of privacy and climbing up into there must really feel like climbing into a treehouse fort or something. Yes, they love it. It feels like a nest. And then with your kitchen area here and again built into the stairs and everywhere here, I just see so much storage in this house. Yes, I like to cook and so this kind of takes up most of the house really. So this space from here to the wall is three meters by three meters so i've put everything that a normal kitchen would have just a little bit more compressed so this has a dishwasher it actually has a washing machine it's actually a kitchen and laundry really in that three by three meter space great sized fridge that you've got here yeah this is a full size fridge i found the quietest fridge i could because i feel that's really important in a small space you don't want to hear like the hum of a fridge and then I really like what you've done over here with the storage and all of these jars and you've really made quite a feature of that, haven't you? Yeah, it's custom built for my jars because that's a really big value of mine to reduce my plastic footprint. So I go to a bulk food place and stock up my jars and like that's one thing that I really love about this space that I'm able to have that and it's displayed. Also, a lot of storage built into the cabinetry as well. Yeah, exactly. So this is my main pantry here. So that pulls out and then it can be part of the kitchen. So I really enjoy using that. And then all of these drawers are soft clothes drawers. So that's just another luxury piece. I also wanted to show you, I do have drawers in the kickers. So that's just more storage. So I have that here and also down here. Great, very, very clever using that space, isn't it? Yeah, it's great for those kind of tray items. And then you've got another one of these wonderful gas sprung windows over here and that really connects the kitchen to the outdoors, doesn't it? Yes, because I do spend a lot of time at the sink and so I can really connect with nature and there's chickens that walk around out there and I throw out my scraps to them and it's kind of being, you know, in tune with nature a little bit more than say you would in a normal house. Really nice big deep sink as well. This is another really important addition in a functional kitchen. Yes, that stone, it actually weighs a lot, but it's worth it because it doesn't scratch. I really love that. And then this tap pulls out so I can fill up buckets. And so it's like a laundry and kitchen in one in this space. And then over here we have your bathroom. Yes, this is my favorite part of the tiny house. I can certainly see why you've done an incredible job of being able to fit the bath into this room. Yeah, so that's a standard size bath. Once again, it's just everything is compressed. And um, yeah, I've got the Nature's Head composting toilet and it's got everything I need in this space. And the bathroom, it is quite a compact design, but you really have comfortably been able to fit everything into this. And it really does feel like a little bit of a sanctuary space in here, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, you know, it's self-care is really important to me. So to have lovely baths and I can look out into nature because that window is really large and it opens right out. Wonderful. And then I really like the design of this mirror and then lovely vanity as well. I really like the basin there. Yeah, that's an artisan concrete basin. So as much as possible, I really try to support the local artisans. It's definitely nice being able to do that, isn't it? And especially in a tiny house where these are things which you see all of the time because you are in such a small space. So being able to bring in artisan elements like this is just a really nice touch. Yeah, it really makes a difference, really elevates the experience of living in a tiny house, I feel. And then above us here, we've got your sleeping loft and really, really nice stair design in order to access that. Yeah, everything has storage. So there's storage here and this is my wardrobe. Um, with all my edited clothes and these drawers have more clothes here so they're my clothes and also the boys so I've spent a lot of time editing the clothes and figuring out the best storage for them and this is Marie Kondo inspired how I folded this and I've just spied the projector up there as well can you tell me about that 
Yeah, so I like to have Friday night movie nights with my boys and we just found that this space was the best space for it. It projects nicely onto that white wall there and we can sit up on the soft bed and have a nice movie on a Friday. Lovely. Well, should we go up into the loft and take a look? Yeah, let's go. All right, thank you. This loft design is really nice. It actually feels incredibly spacious up here. Yeah, with the light, the beautiful natural light coming through the skylight, and also because it is that three metres wide, it just creates that extra spaciousness. It really is amazing what a difference that does make. I love what you've done up here with the plant as well. Yeah, thank you. I really like to have living things in my space. The pegboard, that makes a really wonderful feature up here. Yeah, thank you, because this is my study kind of work area, and so it just has everything I need within arm's reach. Great. Yeah, it's just another good use of space, I feel, so I can just sit here and kind of look out onto the rest of the tiny house. It's lovely as well that you've included all of this storage space where you're featuring a few really special elements too. Yeah, I really tried to make this space mine and to really feel like um, I'm creating a feeling of like calm and softness and like a feminine energy. So the downstairs has a very different feeling to up here. So it's kind of my, my sacred cave. Beautiful. I really like that sentiment. And especially in a sleeping loft as well, it's so important to create that sense of calm and make it a space which can feel like a little bit of retreat and a little bit of separation from the rest of the house. Because especially when you're sharing the tiny house with two young boys as well, having the space which is your own must be really important. Yeah, it's an important part of living in a small space. I feel to have our separate areas that we really feel really at home in. And so how long have you been living in the tiny house now? I've been living here for 12 months. So it took six months to build and I moved here in March. How have you found adapting to life in the tiny house? I found it really smooth sailing. And um, yeah, the adjustment wasn't huge. Moving into a space like this and reducing my living costs. I'm more creative actually. It's opened up so much creative energy in me and I've been able to start my own business and rather than just going back into a job because I was a stay-at-home mum for seven years. So it's actually hard to like just get back into the workforce, but now I have more spaciousness and more creative inspiration to go out and do what I really love. So it's been like an external and an internal kind of upgrade, I suppose, in the way I live. And so this has really created a beautiful sanctuary where I can, you know, really bring my gifts to the world. And I'm like so grateful for that. And you're living here with your two young boys part-time. Mm -hmm. How have they adapted to living in the tiny house? It's been really smooth sailing. I make a really big point of giving them more experiences and less stuff. So that's a big like philosophy around why I went tiny. So we do our homely things and then we go out and have adventures. And when you were visualizing this tiny house, you had this idyllic concept of a little cabin in the woods. Is it living up to that expectation? Very much. I would like to be a little bit kind of higher in the hills and a little bit um, just a bit more privacy, but I'm still very connected to nature here and it's 10 minutes from the beach and it's, it is a really good location. And can we talk a little bit about the cost that was involved in building this home? Yeah, so I had this all done by professionals and it cost $130,000. That's not including the appliances. So I did everything with like the highest quality materials as well. And I think you can really see that in this home as well. Everywhere you look, you can really see the craftsmanship and a lot of the high quality things that you've used to fit it out. Yeah, exactly. So it turned out that my builder was a real artisan and he also had an eye for really high quality things and it was a really good match. And having lived in this home now for 12 months, if there was anything that you would change about the design, what would it be? I wouldn't change anything. I'm just saving up to do a few more extra things like building a decking and getting my own solar and these kinds of things. So it's more adding on. So the bigger vision is that when my boys are teenagers is to build them their own tiny houses and then have a shared space in the middle with a fire pit. And I've got a big vision. It's just, you know, one step at a time. So building a family community out of tiny houses. I really love that idea. And what a great way to keep the family together, maintain independence, and really what a gift for your children for the future. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about it you know, like working towards that vision. 
Absolutely. Well, I'm excited about that vision for you, and I'm excited about this home that you've created here. I think this is a really beautiful space for you and your children. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. Leah really has created such a beautiful and special home here for both her and her young boys. I think what's really special about her story is that here she's created a true sanctuary space for herself. She's found a space which not only provides her with a beautiful home, but also empowers her to be able to do things in the world that she's passionate about. And truly, who can ask more from a home than that?